for Domingue. He thought he would like to stay forever in this lovely place in Manila with these Christians, but he was worried about his mother. Remember, his mother was back home. So when it was time to go, he was ready. Goodbye, his sisters called. We'll be praying for you and for Grandfather. Soon they are outside the city and going bumpity, bumpity, bump over the rough roads of the country. The myriad, the myriad, the minor birds and the mango trees were chattering away as Domingue and the missionary drove past. Domingue hoped one day to have a pet minor bird, the biggest, blackest, anywhere. He knew just what was best to feed one, a hard-boiled egg every other day, cucumbers and chili peppers. He had been told the hotter the peppers, the more the bird would talk. But it would be a long time before he would have a minor bird. We must hurry back to our village, the missionary said. Today is fiesta. Domingue had been so interested in new sights and sounds that he'd forgotten this was the day his village honored their particular saint by holding a fiesta. His heart beat faster. Fiestas were exciting. But one thing at fiesta Domingue did not like. The men drank tuba, an intoxicating drink made from the sap of the coconut palm tree. If grandfather drank too much, as he often did at fiestas, then his mother might be in danger at this very moment, especially if grandfather had discovered she was a Christian, an infidel. Domingue wished the Jeep would go faster. When Domingue and the missionary arrived late in the afternoon, Domingue was so glad to see his mother unharmed that tears came to his eyes. Where is grandfather, he asked. He's gone to the cockpit to watch the cockfight, Domingue. He will gamble away all his money. He has been drinking too much tuba. Mother, does he, does he know about our being Christians? Domingue's mother shook her head. I was afraid to tell him, but I have been talking to Rosa and her mother. Soon we shall, we shall have to let him know. We must go to the church now that we are Christians. Domingue raised his eyebrows high, meaning yes. I'm going to find grandfather right now, mother. Well, do not stay too long, my son. I shall have some cookies for you to eat with your supper when you get back. Then you can be sure I won't stay long, mother. Domingue thought his mother's <laughs> cookies fried in pork fat were delicious. <laughs> the cockfights were almost over when Domingue arrived. The sun was beginning to go down <coughs> over the mountain. This was the sign for the cockfights to stop and the evening fun of dancing and singing to begin. Domingue pushed his way through the crowd. One of the cocks, or the roosters, was almost dead, yet the men laughing and shouting were urging to keep fighting. Each of the cocks had double-bladed spurs fastened to its claws. It made Domingue feel sick to watch. His grandfather didn't see him, and soon Domingue slipped away from the crowd and went slowly back to his home. His head hung low. The old fear was gripping his heart. He kept repeating, let not your heart be troubled. But his heart was troubled, troubled for himself and for his mother. As darkness fell, a band of musicians marched through the village. The children followed. They had instruments too, a banjo made of a polished coconut shell, an American soldier's water container, cut across and covered with animal skin to make a drum, bamboo flutes, castanets made of caribou bones, one had a tambourine made of split bamboo, hooped and covered with skin. It was strung with bells. Another boy kept beating tin can ends together for cymbals. Marching in front of the group was a young man in a shiny bright yellow blouse, tight black torador pants, and shoes of black and white. He walked proudly as he directed the musicians. The people, some in fancy dress on stilts, danced in the streets until late that night. This was fiesta. Everyone was to be happy. Domingue sat in his house beside his mother, watching the festivities. They both kept looking for grandfather. Finally, he came, staggering. He climbed shakily up the ladder step. Do you want me to help you, grandfather? Domingue asked. No, I don't want you to help me, grandfather shouted. Just keep out of my way. Keep out of my way. Domingue gasped when he saw grandfather was carrying his knife in his hand. If, if he should slip, oh dear God, please don't let anything happen to grandfather until I've been able to tell him about Jesus, Domingue prayed in his heart. <clears throat> Grandfather's knife fell to the floor with a great clanging as he dropped to a sleeping mat. 
Domingue's mother had laid it out for him. Almost at once, he seemed to be sound asleep. Domingue and his mother sat in the doorway talking about Manila and the things he had seen during his visit there. Then they talked about their newfound joy, belonging to the Son of God and having his sins forgiven. Wearily, Domingue rolled out his own mat and <coughs> fell into a troubled sleep. Domingue tossed from side to side. He had gone to sleep with the old fear in his heart. Grandfather was more to be feared than ever when he, when he had drank. In his dreams, Domingue seemed to see again the old woman who had warned that something terrible would happen to one of the boys who had allowed their picture to be taken, standing three together. Taking the lighted end of the cigarette out of her mouth, he, was dream he dreamed, she pointed at him saying, you are the one, I warned you, I warned you. The cruel face of the old woman faded in Domingue's dream. In its place came the smiling face of the visitor at the Chinese school as she sat and told Domingue the story of that Mexican boy who had been able to win his father to the Lord. Domingue dreamed also of the missionaries in Manila and of the ones in his own town. Talking in his sleep, he repeated again, let not your heart be troubled. Domingue cried out as he saw his grandfather in his dream carrying his knife and shouting, there is no God but Allah. Domingue was wide awake now. This was not a dream. His grandfather was indeed staggering around the room crying, there is no God but Allah. Domingue's cry wakened his mother as grandfather stood over him, knife upheld. Run, Domingue, run, she screamed. Domingue slid down to the end of his mat and rolled to the door. Grandfather was right behind him. Just as Domingue scrambled down the ladder, the knife slashed a deep, ugly gash in his shoulder. Domingue slid down the ladder and ran up the dusty, dusty road, holding his shoulder, which was bleeding badly. He thought first of Rose's house and began running in that direction. Then he thought, no, I can't. Grandfather knows Rosa and her mother are Christians. He will kill them also. Quickly, he turned and ran to the house of the old woman who had warned him about the picture. He stumbled inside her door crying, help, help me. Grandfather is trying to kill me. The old woman was quick to hear his cry. Get in there in the corner, she said as she took her place in the doorway. Your grandfather is afraid of me. He's very, he's very afraid of me. She said, get over there in the corner. Quickly, he turned and ran to the house. Oh, sorry, I lost my spot. <laughs> Your grandfather's afraid of me. All I have to do is to tell him I'll cast an evil spell on him. It was not grandfather, but Domingue's mother who reached the home first. Grandfather fell as he tried to climb down the ladder. She explained, he's still pretty drunk. I think he may just lie there a while. Let me see the wound, son. Are you badly hurt? The old woman took over. Here, she said, help me. We will put this sap on the wound. It's from the miracle tree. It cures everything. Together by the light of the full moon, which shone inside the house, they stopped the bleeding by wrapping the wound tightly with rags. When they had finished, Domain, weak from loss of blood, lay perfectly still on the floor. By morning, Grandfather appeared in the doorway. He could not remember just what he had done, but the old woman lost no time in telling him, You dirty pig, she cried. Look what you have done to your own grandson. <laughs> Grandfather slid to the floor, head between his hands. There was nothing worse for a Mohammedan than to be called a pig. Pigs were unclean, yet Grandfather did not say a word. He loved his grandson dearly. Finally, he said, Will he get better, old woman? There is only one way to know, she said. We shall have the egg dance. <laughs> a young man was brought in with his goatskin drum. He began beating it while the old woman set out plates. Each plate had an egg on it. Seven candles were lit. Then she picked up two grass sticks, and then she began to dance, holding one egg in her outstretched hand. Her body shivered and shook. Terrible noises came from her throat. She was demon-possessed. Soon the egg in her hand began to tremble. Slowly it rose until it stood on end, small end down, large end up. The drumming and dancing stopped. The spirit has heard. Domingue will get well, the old woman announced. But Domingue did not get well. His mother and grandfather carried him gently to their own home. But in spite of all they knew to do, Domingue got worse. Grandfather would not allow the missionary to see the boy. In his delirium, Domingue often called out, no, grandfather, no. Then calming down, he would repeat, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. 
Quietly one day, Domingue's mother said to grandfather, you have forbidden me to go to the missionaries. You have said you would kill them if they came here, but I am going to them. I shall not watch my boy die. They may be able to help. Grandfather did not try to stop her. He just sat as he had done hour after hour, head bowed between his rough, work-hardened hands. 